Hey everyone, today I'll be going over a simple yet powerful warlock build that transforms you into an unrelenting, unforgiving, unexhaustible force of arc energy. Let's take a look. Fallen Sun Star comes with the perk Ionic Conductor. Ionic traces you create move faster and grant you additional ability energy. Nearby allies also gain ability energy when you collect an Ionic Trace. What this perk lacks in Flash, it makes up for in its potency and ease of use. The extra ability energy these Ionic Traces provide is substantial enough that we have very little downtime in our abilities. Also, providing ability energy to your allies gives this build increased value at higher difficulty content where teamwork is essential. With an exotic armor piece that revolves around Ionic Traces, it makes sense to pair it with an exotic trace rifle, Cold Heart. Cold Heart comes with the intrinsic trait, Cold Fusion. This weapon shoots a steady cold fusion powered arc laser, dealing more damage the longer it remains on target. Its other perk, Longest Winter states, periodically generates ionic traces while in its high damage state. So with Cold Heart, we can continually generate ionic traces if we keep it ramped up, which is easy enough as long as you have plenty of targets to shoot. That's not it though. When selecting certain aspects and fragments, we can really cook with this thing. Let's check out what we got in the subclass section. For our class ability, we'll be using Healing Rift, conjure a well of power that continuously heals those inside it. Our Rift will be our main source of healing and have offensive capabilities when we pair it with the aspect Arc Soul. More on that in a bit. I gotta be honest here, the Warlock Arc Melee is not the best damage dealer, but we can extract some utility out of it. With Chain Lightning, we can jolt a target and chain lightning to nearby targets. While amplified, it creates an additional set of chains. Being able to jolt targets with our melee will come in handy when we combine it with the aspect Electrostatic Mind, which I'll talk about soon. First, let's take a look at what grenades we're running. For the grenade, we're going with Flashbang Grenade, an explosive grenade that damages and blinds nearby targets. Now, I wanted this build to have some viability in endgame activities, so I chose Flashbang Grenades. With these, we'll be able to stun unstoppable champions and create some breathing room by neutralizing enemy fire, so they're great for crowd control as well. Plus, blinding targets before killing them will create ionic traces, thanks to our first aspect, Electrostatic Mine. Defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace. Collecting an ionic trace makes you amplify. This aspect makes it so that almost every tool in our arsenal is either creating ionic traces or priming targets for an ionic trace to be made. This aspect is like the heart of the build, or mind of the build. Anyways, the point is that it's an integral part that keeps this build running on all cylinders. For the second aspect, we have Arxel. Cast your Rift to create an Arxel that fires at targets in front of you. Allies can pass through your Rift to get an Arxel. Your Rift charges faster when allies are near. While amplified, your Arxels are supercharged and gain increased fire rate. Arxel gives our healing Rift offensive capabilities. We can give them to our allies as well. Since we'll frequently be amplified thanks to an electrostatic mine, our Arxels will always be supercharged. They are also a better option for a ranged build like this one. Okay, moving on to fragments. First, we have Spark of Beacons. While you are amplified, your Arc Special Weapon Final Blows create a blinding explosion. With this fragment, Cold Heart doesn't just create ionic traces, but also blinds targets. If that isn't enough, we'll also run Spark of Discharge. Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an ionic trace. So Cold Heart's perk, Coldest Winter, only creates ionic traces when it's at its high damage state. But equipping Spark of Discharge makes it so any kills with Cold Heart have a chance to create ionic traces, ramped up or not. Next, we have Spark of Shock. Your Arc Grenades jolt targets. Our grenades now blind and jolt targets, which will ensure they create ionic traces when they're eliminated. Not only that, being able to jolt targets with grenades means that we can stun overload champions. Finally, for even more ability energy, we'll run Spark of Recharge. While critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerates more quickly. For our super, we have Chaos Reach. Unleash a long-range channeled beam of concentrated arc energy. Sustained damage on single target creates a jolting lightning strike at their position. This is just one of the coolest looking supers in the game, and it's great for burst damage and jolting large groups of enemies. Okay, let's move on to some armor mods that make this build even more sustainable. Since we're running a special weapon as our primary, ammo is going to be a big factor for this build. Here's what we'll need to make sure we got plenty of special ammo. Special ammo finder mod, special ammo scout mod for our teammates, harmonic reserves, elemental munitions, and special finisher 
For orb generation, we're running Harmonic Siphon and Reaper. For ability energy, we have Impact Induction, Bolstering Detonation, and Distribution. For health and resistance, any resist mods, depending on the activity you're running, and a Recuperation mod. We have a few specialty mods as well. Powerful Attraction, Elemental Charge, and Arc Weapon Search mod. We're also going to make use of Artifact mods for this season. We have Elemental Orbs, Arc, Communal Pickups, Refreshing Pickups, and Monochromatic Maestro. Other weapons and stats. For Heavy Weapons, I recommend an Arc Heavy Weapon to make use of Monochromatic Maestro and Arc Weapon Search mods, but it's totally optional. For the Kinetic slot, any of the primary weapons that take Anti-Champion mods for this season are a good choice. And finally, I recommend running High Resilience and Recovery for this build if you plan on taking it into high difficulty content. Well, there you have it folks, that's the build. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, until next time.